Also, as you can ask them, the, the tutors, they are always around, <laughs> right? So, uh, uh, Silas and Denise are our part on experts, I think. I think some of the others I also can help you, but I don't, don't know which ones. I think Amanda and Rafael do know a bit of Python. They all, uh, and pa no, Pablo as well, right? So, uh, uh, yeah, they, they all, all of them know a bit of Python, right? So, <laughs> yeah, you can always uh, also uh, ask them, okay? So, uh, can we then go to, I think, uh, oh, okay, so Natalia already gave the start over there. So, uh, so now uh, the idea now is to start working with arrays, okay? And we already started to talk a bit about differences between arrays and lists, right? So arrays are the most, uh, most useful type for numerical computing because uh, uh, you can use them uh, as if they were kind of like vectors in math, right? So you can sum a number and it sums a number to all the numbers inside the array. You can sum arrays together that it sums element by element. You can use it as matrices. Uh, you can use it in, a, in, a, 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 in several useful ways, right? So let's, uh, let's do that uh, tutorial again. So go over a, a tutorial again. So the first thing to remember is what we have seen at the end of the last class, that when you import uh, a library, right? So here is, is NumPy for numerical Python. And when you import it, there are several ways to import a library. Uh, you see here uh, that you can import directly, you can import with a nickname, you can import specific functions, or you can import all functions, right? And as I just said a bit at the end of the class uh, yesterday, this class here is a bit uh, frowned upon because, <laughs> because you are importing a lot of stuff that you don't even know. And that is the, the chance of name clashes is, is large, right? So you should probably avoid this. And so the most practical, and this is just too boring to remember to import every single function you're going to use, right? You may forget in part, okay? So this is usually the most practical, the, the way I, I recommend to use, right? So using importing with a nickname, right? So you just call NumPy, import NumPy as MP, and then you can use the functions inside with MP dot function name, right? For instance, this, the sign here, okay? So I run this, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, today we have, uh, yeah, I'm not in my account, right? So today I have a uh, notebook in Spanish, yeah. So uh, let me just, uh, yeah, four. Okay. okay, so here it is, the sign. And one thing about this stuff here, right, is that now we imported a lot of stuff already in this environment, right? So there are a lot of variables and functions and so on, right? So if you run this stuff here, what this dear, this dear here does, it uh, tells you all of the, of the names that were defined, right? So you, have, you see that there are hundreds here, right? So there's a total of five, 509, right? So uh, yeah, <laughs> right? So, uh, so NumPy has a lot of stuff inside, right? So if you want to clear your environment, you can use this reset function. It just resets the environment, okay? It, it clears all the variables, all the functions, and it also deletes any variable that you had calculated already. So be uh, a bit careful, okay? So I will run this, and now my, our environment is clean again. It has only 11 variables here, okay? We don't have to go into what they are right now, but uh, yeah. So array versus list, okay? So uh, one thing that we, we can do for creating arrays is you can just use a list, take a list of numbers, and now you do have to use a list of numbers. You cannot, if you want to convert to an array, you cannot uh, mix numbers with strings and so on. This will be a mess, okay? You have to use a list of numbers, and you just call the array function to convert this list to an array, right? So this is v1 over here. You see that it looks like a list, but it's actually an array, okay? Uh, if I printed here uh, uh, type, I think it was this way, right? So 
This is a NumPy class, you see? It's a, it's a NumPy type, not a, a list type, okay? Yes, yeah, just compare this, right? So if I had a list here instead of instead of uh, an array, it would be a list, you see? Not an NumPy array, okay? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so the other, uh, so, so the first thing is, okay, we, we, we want to be able to create arrays in an easy way, okay? So other ways, instead of just listing all of the elements is uh, using functions like the range, okay? Remember that we, we learned how to use range? It's start, then stop, and then the, the size of the step. You can do this in NumPy using a function called a range, okay, inside NumPy. And it's the same principle. You start with one, then goes up to 10, with half steps, okay, steps of size half, okay? And uh, uh, in exactly the same way, uh, same way as in range, a range doesn't include the 10. Okay, so this stops at nine and a half, not at 10, okay? So if I print this here, you say started at one, one and a half, two, two and a half, and the last one is nine and a half, you see? Not 10, okay? So this is very, very useful in general. And uh, another way to do this is that instead of, instead of giving the size of the step, you can give, you, give the, the beginning, the end, and how many numbers you want in, the, in your range. And then it goes equally spaced when you use this function called lean space, that is linear spacing, okay? So this is equally spaced intervals, right? And this one here goes from minus one and a half to two and a half in six, uh, in six steps, right? So you see here, it goes from minus 1.5 to 2.5. So this is not a range, okay? This is lean space, so it includes the end point, two and a half. And, it, and this array here has six values, okay? Six, uh, you see, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? In equally spaced, I think this is 0 0.8 from one point to the next, okay? Right? Uh, and finally, uh, you can also uh, create uh, arrays that are full of zeros or full of ones, okay? So, uh, so if you want an array with four zeros, you use np.04 or with five ones, np.15, you see you get these arrays over here, you see? Uh, and of course, if you want, for instance, an array with tens, <laughs> what do you do? You create an array with ones and multiply this by 10, okay? And then you have an array of tens, or you take an array of zeros and some 10, <laughs> okay? If you want a constant, uh, a constant uh, array, okay? Uh, questions so far? Okay, so uh, so this is these are the main ways to create. Uh, there, are, there are other ways too, right? But uh, these are the main ways to create uh, arrays. And that, now, how do you get values from an array? So this is pretty similar to to lists, right? You can use an index starting at zero, and you can also have negative indexes and so on. Pretty much the same thing we did with lists. Uh, I think on Monday, right? And uh, uh, and you can also use slices, right? So remember slices when you take a range of values from, from the list. So for instance, the first element of that list, I think V1 is this one, right? One, two, three, yeah, one, two, three. So the first element is, is one, the last element is three. Uh, we can cut a race of V2 V2 was this one, right? From one up to nine and a half, okay? If you get uh, from, the f from the third element uh, up, to the si up to the 50, right? Including the 50, but not the sixth. Okay, if remember five is the sixth element, but it's not included, okay? So it go up to the fifth element, okay? So this, is, uh, this gives you an uh, array with three elements, the third, the fourth and the fifth, right? So this will be uh, two and a half, three and two and a half, right? So let's see if this is. Do you follow or not? Am I? Yes or no? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> no, more or less. It's a little bit too fast. Okay. Uh, so let me run this just to. Yeah. So. 
you see, let me print V2 here, right? So this is, will be easier if we look at V2 first. Uh, so let's print V2. So what is a slice going to do? It starts with the element two, that is the third element. So this is the whole array here, the V2 array. And I start with, this is the zero, this is the one, this is the element with index two. So it starts here and goes on until uh, the element with uh, index five. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five. That is the three and a half, but it doesn't include the three and a half, so it takes the two up to the three. Okay, two, two and a half, and three. Is it clear enough? Yes. Yes. yes? Okay. Uh, and then you had this other way to to get it that you don't uh, you don't include the first element here, so it goes up to the index four from the beginning. So this is exactly the same as putting a zero here. Doesn't matter. And this goes from starting with this one and going up until the end when you don't have the second number here, right? So this takes the first four elements. So, so you have the zero, one, two, and three up to two and a half, but doesn't include the element with index four. And this one takes what? The last two elements, okay? It begins with the penultimate element and goes up to the end. So it takes the last two here, okay? Yeah, fine. So, uh, and finally, there's something funny that you can also do that is included just two, uh, just a column here, just two dots here. That means take the whole vector. <laughs> this is also possible, okay? Yeah. So, but why would you use this one? Ah, this is a good question, yeah, later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a moment, well, it, it will be clearer when we use, um, when we have two-dimensional vectors, okay, ah. two, two-dimensional arrays, matrices, okay, yeah, because then you will sometimes want to have a, a whole column, a whole line, and then you need to put something there, okay, so, yeah, so making copies of vectors. This is this is a funny thing here, okay. Uh, when you when you is you this old here, so it's, uh, don't look at look at this first, okay, at this part here. What do you expect to happen? You have a equals one. Okay, so a is variable that is the integer one. Now you, you say b equals a. Now b, what is the value of b? It's one, okay? Yeah, simple, right? And then if I say, okay, a is now equal to two. What is the value of b? b is still equal to one, or, or is now b also equal to two? What do you expect? One, right? So you, you, you change it A, but not B, B is, is one, right? So let me run just this part here, okay? So B is, is it still equal to, to one, okay? You change it A, but B was one, it doesn't change, okay? But when you do this with lists or arrays, what happens? You have A is an array with one element, that is one. You said B now is this array uh, with one inside, and now I take the first element of A, and say that it, its value now is two, okay? So now A is an, an array with a single element two. What happens with B? Is it now value two or is it still one? What happens is a bit surprising because it changes two, okay? So when you copy integers, uh, it copies the value and the new variable is completely independent of the previous one. But when you copy lists and vectors, uh, what you're saying now, B or two A, is means not that you, you, don't, you don't copy this array here for the variable B. They both point to the same array, okay? So for, you, for those that know a bit of C, it's like uh, you are pointing to the same memory address. You're not creating a copy. I don't know if this makes sense to anyone, but whatever, <laughs> right? So, so this two, both A and B point to the same array. So if you want to make a copy in such a way that if you change the original array without changing the copy, right? You need to use uh, the copy function, okay? So this here is what we actually want, right? So you use B equals to A dot copy, okay? This method copy, and now this generates a new array 
in a different location from the previous one and assigns it to B. And now I can change A without changing the value of B. Okay, so if you run this now, right? So here A is one, two, three. I copy to B here. Now I change the first element of A to 10, okay? And now this changes A, but it doesn't change B, okay? So you have to be aware when you are working with arrays that whenever you have two variable names pointing to the same array, when you change one, you're changing the other, right? So you don't, if you want to actually separate arrays that you're going to change separately, you need to copy it, okay? Not, don't, not only uh, assign to a new name, okay? Yeah? Okay, so it's, yeah, it's something that it's easy to, <laughs> to make uh, uh, mistakes here. Okay, so uh, this is pretty much it for now. We'll see operations in a bit, right? But before going for operations, I want to talk about uh, more uh, of, about matrices, right? So that is uh, another way of, of saying this is that these are two-dimensional uh, arrays, right? What it means two dimensions? It means that you have, you have two indexes, right? So you have... Uh, it's like a matrix. You have lines and you have columns. Okay. When you have a single, uh, a single dimension array, you only have one index, right? Only the position along a, a, a line, right? Now you have lines and columns. Okay. Yeah. And uh, okay. Uh, of course, if you want to do this with lists, okay, you can. You can do what it, what we call a list of lists. Okay. What is this? You take a list. Right, is we start a list here, and inside each list, inside each element, we have another list, right? So this is, oops. So this is like the first line is one, two, three. The second line is four, five, six. The third line is seven, eight, nine, right? And this whole thing here is the whole matrix, okay? So if I print this, let me run this stuff here. You have this, okay? Okay. Now, if I want to get one element in this list of lists, I have to first, so, so, so suppose that I want to get the six here. I want to first take the second element of the outer list, that is, so M1, to take this list, and then inside this list, get the last element, that is the element of index two, right? So zero, one, two. So I, I need to do this, right? M, index one, index two, okay? Is that clear? So this is how you do that with list of lists, but it's not very practical, okay? Uh, when you convert this to an array, okay, so just to show it, this is six here, okay, M12, right? Uh, it's much more useful to do this with arrays, right, to de-arrays. So you convert this in the same way as we did before. You convert the list of lists to an array, and here you have to be careful that it only works if if this list of lists, all of them are numbers, and all of them are the same size, right? So if I do this here, if I don't have a, a nine here, <laughs> I cannot have this, right? Because this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's missing one element, right? So if I try to run this, it gives me an error, right? Because, uh, because it's missing. Uh, oof. It gives me an error here. I think it should give me an error here <laughs> somehow, but uh, but it's missing something here. Okay, you cannot. You have. You need to have all of them the same size, right? Okay. So uh, now, uh, when I print this, you see that even printing is is nicer. Yeah. Uh, okay, just uh, let me go back then. So uh, this is, w to get this, uh, this is a list of lists, right? So to get this six here, you have to, to get first the, the second. So let me print uh, uh, M1 here, okay? Print M1. What does this do? It prints the second element of M, okay? Right? So what is this? This is a list. This is the list four, five, six. And now to get the six, I need to get the third element of this list, all right? And then the third element of M1 is M1, two, right? And that's the six, okay? Clear? Okay. 
I also have a question. Yeah. Um, you said that there was suppo supposed to be an error there, but um, are you not allowed to have a list, a list of elements of different sizes? Yeah. But. So if I print this here, what happens here? Let me see. Uh, ah, okay. It tries to, to have the whole thing as if it were a single object. This is it's doing something weird and not with what you would expect. You know, okay. it's not really a two D array, right? So yes, that was that was my question. Is there error occurring when you're trying to convert the list into an array? Because then the different yeah. sizes. Yeah. What what happens is. Uh, if this is not a lineage, right? So you have a, a, an, a list of lists that has three elements, three elements, and then two elements, okay? It says it, 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 this is not a 2D array. So instead of converting this to an array that is three by three, it says this is, of course, not an array three by three. It do, it, what it does create, you see here, it, it creates a single, uh, an array with a single element whose, uh, <laughs> which, which has a single element that is this whole list. Okay, so, and this is of course not what you want, right? You want a three by three uh, array, right? Okay. So, and then it gives you an error when you try to, <laughs> when you try to get the, this element here, because now it has a single element, okay? Okay. So let me put this back here. Okay, more questions? Yes. Uh, this array just will work if the lists have the same length? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the sublist is here inside. They have to all have the same length, the same okay. size. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't give you what you want, right? So you see now that when I convert this m variable here to an array, okay, even printing this is nicer. You see the difference between this printing as a list and this printing as an array, okay? It's, uh, it's already well formatted, you know? And now instead of uh, using two indexes separately, because this I had to take first the second line and then the third, the third element in the second line. Now I can use a single index here with separated by a comma, okay? So this is a... Uh, of course, the other notation still works. I think this is still works because this is still uh, M1 is still the first line, the second line, and this is uh, this is still works. But then it's much more convenient to have a single uh, a single bracket here, and then you separate the value of you have the line number and then the column number. Okay. Yeah, just as you do in regular matrix. Uh, regular matrix uh, notation, okay? Yeah? So, uh, what is nice about this, let's go on, right? So, what is nice about this is that now, well, I should, yeah, now we can use slices, right? But there, first, let's talk about, about other ways to arrange, to create matrices, right? So, an um, easy way to do this, besides, of course, this is very boring to just write it out, everything here as a list of lists and then convert, uh, you have, you can create, for instance, should create this uh, an, a matrix with elements from one to twelve, with three lines and four columns. I can just uh, create this array. So this creates an array from one to twelve, right? You see, a range one thirteen gives you one to twelve, right? The, the full step size is one. Now I have this thing here, so one to twelve. You see, one to twelve, a regular one-dimensional array. And now there's this function called reshape that changes the shape. It means transform uh, this single dimensional vector into a new shape. What is this shape? It's a, a shape that has, you see that there's a parenthesis that is the parenthesis of the reshape function. And inside there's another parenthesis that means the new shape is actually bidimensional, has two values, the number of lines that is three and the number of columns that is four, you see? So that's, so you do need two parentheses here, okay? Uh, yes. But then you would have to know 
Yeah, for you example. Want, uh, how many lines in all ones you want? Yeah. Yes, but for example, if I wanted mm, four lines with five elements, then it wouldn't work. Ah, yeah, of course. You have that your total number of elements in the array has to be compatible with the, the, the shape you want, right? So, yes, yeah. I'm if thinking for like... If I do this like here, <laughs> it doesn't work, right? If I do this, yes. that's the question, right? It doesn't work, right? Because I'm thinking with a like... a value error, okay? Because the, the shape you want uh, needs more elements, right? So it's a different number of elements, okay? So I'm thinking like with an, uh, a large array that I'm not sure how many elements are there. There's a way to I just say like I want this number of lines and then it will arrange the columns uh, in a way that distributes. The you have to do the math. You have to do the division. No, no, no. no. If I say, uh, oh, there's this array and I want it in divided into two lines. Then you have to take the length of the array divided by two and say, well, okay, now this, this is this number of columns. Yes. Uh, you have to do the math. No, so yes, it's but not if, automatic. I, if no. I don't know the, no, the I, I, there are there any cases that I will not know the range of the array? Uh, it's uncommon to not know, but it's uncommon for you to not know and need to know. <laughs> you see, because sometimes okay. you don't know and you don't care, right? Okay. You just have uh, an array and uh, uh, it doesn't, you see, usually when it matters, you will know. <laughs> okay. But okay. then uh, if, you, if you have to, you do the math, okay? You just uh, compute, uh, uh, in this age, for instance, I can just take the length of this stuff here and say, oh, I want this, I want the length of R1G uh, divided by 3, okay? And this has to be integer, so I, I, but but two bars here, okay, two 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 slashes, and this works, okay, because this here will give you four, okay. okay. This ha this is twelve, so if I put a few more numbers here, uh, uh, I have to add three, right? So, oops, no, I had to add four, right? So, uh, uh, I Oh no, it, it worked it, but then it gave you an error over over down here, okay. So now this is worse. You see now it, it creates a five columns, okay? So I didn't need to know I would do just do the math. Okay? Okay, so let me go back because the, the the order that follows depends on the size. Okay. Uh and finally you can also take this is this stuff here and go back to the value before, right? So if I take this M2 now that is a, a two-dimensional array, I can just reshape it with now 12. You see that 12 is just a single number, okay? And before you had two numbers here, uh, uh, you see? Three and four, right? So let me go back to four here, right? And now if I put a single number, then this M2 is now once again uh, a one-dimensional array, you see? Right? And something that, that you have to be a little bit careful is that it's possible to have two dimensional arrays that are that has a single line and a single column. Okay? So if you have two numbers here, like one and twelve, this is different from this stuff here. Twelve and one. You see here that you can have a a, a, a matrix that are, is a single line and a matrix that is a single column. And this is slightly different than this stuff here, you see? So this is a, actually a two-dimensional array, but with a single line. And it still takes two indexes and, and so on, okay? So in, in math, you usually don't doesn't care if a vector is a one-line matrix or is a one-dimensional vector. It's the same stuff, right? But uh, here we have to, to be a bit careful about this, okay? Uh, Yes. That example, the one that that you're showing, is it uh, two-dimensional? Because I, I, is it like? Sorry, it is that a matrix of one uh, one line, but it, it is also one column, right? Yeah. But here is is a single line with twelve columns, and here is one column with twelve lines. I didn't understand the difference then between 
Okay, so let, let's change the names here, right? So let's say that this is uh, M3, this is M4, just to, just to, so we can play a, a little bit, right? So, uh, yeah, and let me change the printing also. I don't know why I, I, I reuse it, all the variable names. So here it is, right? So um, this is uh, uh, M2, M3, M4. Okay, so M2 is a one, a single dimensional. Uh, M, M4, sorry, M4 is one line and 12 columns. And M5 is one column, 12 rows, 12 lines, okay? So yes. So now if I have, if I want, for instance, the five here, okay? The five here, I want to take M3, four, okay? Here it is. If I want, in, if I do this with this guy here, okay, with M4, what, ha what, what, work, what, what, what will happen here? It doesn't have the fourth line. It has only a single line. So M4, zero is the first line, and you want the fourth column in the first line. This is five, right? And if I do this with M5, okay, uh, what is M5 uh, for? It's the fourth line. You see that it's not five. It's the whole line. It's a line that contains a single element five. If I want the five itself, I have to take four, zero. You see? Okay. So a, a two-dimensional array always takes two indexes. A single-dimensional one takes single one index, okay? So it's a, you see a, there's a little bit of difference, yeah? More questions? Okay, let's, let's move on. Yeah. Oh, another question. Good afternoon. Uh, do it's line column or l column line when you call? It's always line column, right? Okay. So it's the number of the line and then the number of the column, okay. yeah? Okay, so, uh, and then of course, and also use this function zeros and ones that we had before, right? And the nice thing is that in already, instead of just putting a number, input two numbers here, and it will already give you an array uh, with, that, with that shape, right? So if I run this here, you have a two by, a two, by two matrix with zeros, and this is a two by five, two lines, five columns with ones, okay? And there's this nice function called transpose this method that transposes the matrix, okay? So this, if I take this two by five and transpose, I get something that is uh, five by two, five lines and two columns. Okay, yeah? Nice. Uh, okay, and now, the, now it begins to get really, really interesting, right? Because now we can also do slices on a matrix, right? And the nice thing about slices in a matrix is that, that you can slice at the same time the lines, the rows, and the columns, okay? So you can, you can cut squares, rectangles anywhere in your, in, your, in your array, okay? So for instance, let's print again the whole matrix here. It is this matrix here, right? This is the matrix M, okay? Uh, if we want to take the whole second line, okay? What is the second line? It's M1, okay? And if you want the whole line, you, you think you have this comma here, and then the two dots by themselves here, okay? This means all of the columns, okay? The whole vector, the whole second line, you see? So this is why you can have that slice that doesn't do anything. It starts from the beginning and goes until the end, okay? So this is a slice that does nothing, okay? So this is the whole second line here, okay? Four, five, six. Okay, if I want to take the whole third column, I take all of the lines, so I don't, have, I don't do anything in the first, the slice of the lines, but I take only the second, uh, the, the, the index two that is the third, third column here, okay, you see? And now you get 369. Why does it print like this? Because now uh, this is a, a single dim dimensional vector again, because this is a single, a single value here, okay? So you, you are taking, a single dimensional vector, a single dimensional array out of the, out of the matrix, okay? Uh, and finally, if I do slicing in both of them at the same time, what does this mean? This means starting 
with the second line up to the end and the second column up to the end. Okay, so this cuts out the first line and the first column and gives me this submatrix here, five, six, eight, nine. You see? Nice, right? So you can now slice both columns and lines at the same time. So you can take, uh, and this can be very, <laughs> there are a lot of very funny ways to do here because you remember that you'd also take, I don't know, only the, uh, the, the even columns, <laughs> you can take from, you can take them backwards, you can take, you can do a whole bunch of weird stuff here, okay? <laughs> Uh, but anyway, this is uh, this this is very powerful. Okay, uh, and of course, this I, I'm not going to talk about higher dimensional vectors here, uh, higher dimensional arrays. But instead of having two numbers when you reshape, or you can put three, four, five numbers here to have uh, three-dimensional, four-dimensional, five-dimensional arrays, and so on, uh, and then you have more indexes and so on. This is not very common to have to use this, I think. Uh, so we, we won't talk much about this, okay? Uh, and now uh, the very useful part also is, uh, oh, okay, we are running uh, out of time. Okay, let, let me just go over just the functions here because this is very simple, okay? So operations on arrays, they happen on each element one by one, right? So if you have the, this array here, the M array one to nine here, uh, if I want to zero the first column, I just say, well, take the first column and put then put it equal to zero, okay? Uh, when you work with arrays, remember the first example of the A equals B and so on, right? This M, uh, this slice here, is not only this, this array, this single dimension array, but it's also the, the address in the memory where it is. So when you say, this is equal to zero, it, may, it takes the M, the whole matrix, and say, okay, this column is now equal to zero. So when I print M here, it is changed, you see? The first column is now zero. Nice, huh? So it's very easy to manipulate and, and alter and change the matrix using uh, this slices here, okay? So slices serve not only to, are useful not only for taking stuff out, but also to change your matrix in place. You see? Yes. You, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, you're looking for the mic. Yeah. Um, I, I'm more used to R. So we could use this to like apply a function to another column. Uh, like uh. I want to, I want that the last column of my matrix is now like the square root of the second one. Yeah, yeah, you can do this also, right? So you can also say, oh, instead of this, I want to square this, this thing here, right? So, uh, well, now M, <laughs> uh, M had changed, right? So let me run this again because, yeah, just to have the original M back. So I want this to now be it is squared, something like this, right? Oh, uh, 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 um. Ah, well, this is, why, what happened here? Uh, I have to run, where did I define M? Over here, yeah. yeah. No, let's, let me go back. Uh, okay. N let me, let me redefine M because I think, uh, uh, M, oops. You see, oh, uh, uh, it was four by three or two by four? Oh, it doesn't matter, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so you see, now what I did here is that I squared the first column, you see? This is what you're asking. So I can just apply any function here, okay? So in this case, I squared, but I would have done something else, okay? Uh, you can also assign a new a new array here, okay? So in this case, I took the the third uh, the third line and said, okay, now this is equal to three to one. So now the third line here, instead of being forty nine eight nine, is three to one. So I can change just this line or this. I can take any slice inside here and change its value, okay? Uh, 
Oh, so a rich match operations, this is pretty easy, right? So let me take this one here again. If I take a, an array here, for instance, this array here from 0 to 5, if I sum a number, it will now, it, this doesn't work with lists, but works with arrays. If I sum 10 digits, sum 10 to each element. If I multiply by something, if I do the power, so this is everything to the power of 3, right? So this is all the cubits, okay? Uh, if I do 10 to this, to this array, it is applied to each one. So this is 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, you see? So this also works. And if you do an array times another array, it could be a different array, it multiplies each element with each element. So this is the same as squaring, right? So this is 0 times 0, 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, and so on, right? So you do those element-wise, element by element, okay? So this is very useful, right? And uh, if you do want to do, when you see this, you, you think of, well, isn't this the scalar product, the internal product, you know, the, 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 yeah, the dot product. If you want a dot product where you sum all these products, okay, you need to use a function called dot, okay? So this is v point dot v, okay? And now this is, uh, this is actually an internal product, right? And this is also used for uh, matrix multiplication, right? So if I have uh, this matrix here, uh, I, I will quickly because uh, we want to finish, right? So I have this matrix here. If I want to multiply this matrix by V, you have to do M point dot V. If you, if you ju just do M uh, asterisk V, it doesn't give you the same stuff, okay? If you want to do matrix multiplication, a scalar multiplication, a scalar product, you want to use this function dot, okay? The full, the full operations are element by element and not uh, matrix operations, you see? Is, it, is that clear? Yeah? Or, uh, and finally, um, last thing for today, right? You can also uh, run functions over the whole array, okay? Not only operations, but also functions. So if you want to calculate the sign of each element, you just do sine of v, okay? So this is this is sine of zero, sine of one, sine of two, sine of three, sine of four, sine of five. This is exponential of zero, exponential of one, exponential of two, exponential of three, exponential of four, and so on, right? And the logarithm also. You see that there's an error here. You see there's a uh, uh, there's an infinity here. You see why is that? Because we try to do the logarithm of zero, okay? So this is is your minus infinite here, okay? Uh, it should have appeared a warning here. Ah, okay, here it is, right? Runtime warning, divide by zero, okay? Uh, okay, and this, uh, a final note of warning here is not that any function automatically takes an array and applies to each element of the array. Your function has to, to, to do it, okay? So NumPy functions, all of the NumPy functions take arrays, okay? If you import, remember in the last class that you imported uh, square root from the math library. The math library doesn't do that. So it's, it's uh, so don't use math functions from the math library mixing with arrays, right? So uh, NumPy has its own square root function that does take arrays, okay? But the math functions from the math library don't, right? So it's, uh, so you should also always avoid to use math functions together with NumPy functions, okay? Because otherwise you, you try to do an operation on an array and it won't work, okay? Yeah? So yeah, so uh, there's just a, a little bit that we can work on tomorrow, right? So tomorrow we will talk a bit about Matplotlib, uh, do more exercises uh, from today and a little bit more exercises with NumPy arrays, okay? And that's it for today, yeah. So, uh, so just to let me stop here. Uh,